an olive by the two dots. Right in the middle of the page, Amar Rav Amar Rav Nachman. So we had the Mishnah a machlekas between the Tanakhama and Rabbi Yehuda, where the Tanakhama said that even within Israel itself, um, certain places, if you make a macha, if we know that the macha, the protest, will never <clears throat> reach the ears of the person who is um, who's uh, residing on the land, and uh, and therefore you need to maintain your star forevermore. Because it's treated like there's a war going on, a cold war between the say, the Galil and Yehuda. And the Rabbi Yehuda said that, no, Rabbi Yehuda said, the way we understood it is that if the person lives near you or in a city not far from you, and he doesn't protest straight away, the original owner, he forfeits his rights. The din of three years was really only made for people who live very, very far away. And um, let's say in Spain. It takes a year of person living there before it becomes major news, and then a year for someone to go there and inform them, and then a year to come back. So that's when you that's when you need three years. So three years has nothing to do with the rule about star. A person watches the star for three years and then he loses it. it has nothing to do with that. <clears throat> so it also it seems according to Rabbi Huda, if you take it literally, that you have to make that trip from Spain all the way to. To, uh, to this town, to this city where this person's house is. So that's what Rav Nachman is going to talk about. Rav said, Nir Nachman. Amar Rav Nachman. Macha shalei b'fanav havi macha. We were discussing yesterday. A macha. Do you have to, the original owner has to actually physically stand there in front of the squatter and say, hey, you have no right to be on my property. Or do we say, no, that as long as he says it to certain a few people and they pass it on, that's good enough. That's good enough. <clears throat> Um says the Gemara Ace of a even though Rava said this name Rab Nachman, he had a question on it. You say that that Amacha Shalai Bafanov is good enough. Well, look in the Mishnah Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Um, Rabbi Yehuda, it says in our Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda said, Amru Shani, what's the idea of three years? El If somebody lives in Spain, the Yahzik Shana. And it takes a year for somebody living on your property before it makes a lot of it draws a lot of attention. The Yale Khu, the idea Shana, and then somebody has to travel to where you are in Spain. And I guess it took a year in those days to travel there. Then the Yava um the Yava, and then the Shana Khalis, and then it takes a year for this guy to come back. Sounds like the real the original person has to make that long trip in order to be made to this. Person now is uh, you know dwelling on your property or in your property. Now, if you believe that that you don't have to personally present yourself to protest, why in the world does Rabbi Yehuda insist that this person should come back? Let him remain in his place there in Spain, and and let him protest right then and there in front of people, and and we'll, we'll get back. Why does he have to make that trip? Doesn't that prove that macha shalei befun of loy havi macha and that you have to come? Not like Rav Nachman. The question that bothers all the Rishayim is, but that's Rab, that's Rav Yehuda. If you remember yesterday, we learned by the Tanakhama, the first opinion holds that macha shalei befun of havi macha, and the only reason why Yehuda in Galil that the, um, the, there's no macha there is because it's a state of war and people are not traveling back and forth. So what are you asking a kasha on Rab Nachman from the Rab Yehuda when the Rabbanon say exactly what Rab Nachman said in the halacha of Rabban? So interesting that Rabban says it must be that Rav learned a different pshat in the Tanakhama, not like we learn what I say, but the Rabban doesn't offer a, a, a pshat. He said it must be there's another pshat, but he, as if to say, but I don't know what the pshat is, but there is something else. Faisus himself gives another pshat here in, in how Rav understood the Mishnah. He said that Rav understood the Mishnah that if Macha from um if if we're going, if a, if um you if you expect a Macha to happen then you must also assume that the Chazaka in order to make a Macha you have to find out first that somebody's dwelling in your land and happening in your land. And so therefore Rav understood that if the Chazaka can reach a certain place then automatically the Macha will also Come back to the guy who's machzik. If the if the person is machzik, the word has uh, gets somehow or another. You don't the machzik doesn't have to come to the to the original owner and say, "Hey, I have your land." Word gets out there. So the same thing in the return. It's the same thing. 
However, if you remember, Tracers a few days ago told us that um, when it comes to the Mahzik, the original owner has an interest. What's happening to my land? Somebody's there. How's it going? So therefore, a, a person will find out about if somebody's Mahzik in his land, even though they're far away. But if a person bought a property, generally bought a property, he doesn't walk around saying, oh, by the way, the original owner, is he saying he's denying it now? He doesn't ask any questions. He bought it. He knows he bought it. And that's the end of the story. That's why Macha needs a stronger, a stronger, um, I guess, way of communicating than the Chazaka. That's Tesla's before. But Tesla here says that Rava, however, understood it works both ways. If Chazaka can spread all the way there, so can the Macha spread all the way back. So if the person living in Spain hears about a guy living in his property, so too, then the guy living in the property will hear about the protest the guy makes in Spain. So how could Rabbi Huda says that he has to make the trip personally and go all the way back there? It's clear, it's not enough that the guy on the property knows that there's a protest out there. The guy on the property has to hear it directly from the mouth of the person who's protesting. So that's his question. Rabbi Huda clearly says, And, and he says, um, but um, and the same in Tanakama. The Tanakama holds that the person in Galil won't even know that there is a Chazak and therefore he won't be Meichen. And that's why Yehuda and Galil, there's no Chazaka, because he'll never find out in the first place. If nobody travels back and forth. But within Yehuda itself, within Yehuda itself, the, um, the Tanakhama says, since the Chazaka it gets out there, he agrees that you have to personally come to the uh, to the Mahzik and protest. So in other words, in principle, Rava understood that everyone agrees Macha has to be done by fun of. Anyway, so the Gemara, so that's his question. Ram Nachman responds, don't bring me any proof from Rabbi Yehuda or from either opinion. You really don't have to come. Machash Lebefan is good enough. But you know why he, he's, he's recommending that the, owner, that the person in Spain should make that trip? Because apart from taking back your property, what about the yield? What about the crop that this person has eaten the last few years? If you just make a macha, you'll never get your money back. So therefore, the only way you'll get your money back is and stopping him further going there is you have to make that trip there and and try to get your money back of all the, the, the crops and find out how long you've been there and so on. So eight atomic commercial, he's just giving advice. The nation is out of pay go back and retrieve your land and retrieve the fruit that he ate. Says the Gemara. The fact that the Rabbi asked the question of Nachman, why are you saying is good enough? From Rabbi Yehuda, it appears that it has to be the fun of. Doesn't that, doesn't that in any way demonstrate to us that Rabbi Nachman personally holds, sorry, that the Rabbi personally holds the only macha that is recognized is a macha of the fun of. <clears throat> Since Rabbi asked the question of Nachman, it's quite clear that Rabbi personally does not agree with a macha should lay the fun of. He holds it has to be that, uh, that you have to make it the fun of. How can that be? We learned yesterday. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi said yesterday, Macha shalei b'fanav habi Macha. He said yesterday, at the very bottom of the page, that a Macha, even though it wasn't personally done by the original owner, good enough. And so the Gemara, not a problem. Basa de Shama met Rabbi Nachman. Sabra. After he heard from Rabbi Nachman's answer, he, he he changed his mind and agreed with Rabbi Nachman. So now he also agrees that Macha shalei b'fanav is good enough. Says the Gemara, talking about Chazok and Macho, Ashkechinu, Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Chanina once met, or Tamida, Rabbi Yaisi, the students, Rabbi Yaisi. Amaluhu. So he said to them, okay, you have to make a Macho, right. even lay the fun of. But if, before how many people do you have to make a Macho? Yeah. He, Amar Rabbi Yaisi, did Rabbi Yaisi say, Macho become in front of how many people you have to make a Macho? If somebody can mute themselves, please. In the name of Rabbi Yechen, said, You need two people in order to make a macha. Like, we'll soon see what the logic is, why two people. And <clears throat> you need three, which is a bezden. What's going on here? So it seems that one, one person said, Rabbi Yechen, you need two witnesses. And the other one says, no, no, you need more than that. You need a best. Lema, let us say, they you know what the crux of their argument is? It revolves around a din that Rabba Barab Huna said. We all know how terrible Lush and Hari is. And, and people don't like to, to, to slander or to spread gossip. 
So, what, uh, but Rabbi Rav Huna said, we'll learn more Erchen in details there. Kol milsa de mis amra ba'apetlosa. Anything that's said before three people, les ba mishum lishna bisha. There's no longer any Lashon Haradin. Why? Because everybody knows. Now, whether it's referring to everybody has now the right to continue to repeat the story because no Lashon Haradin, or are we actually talking about the three people that heard it directly from the original person? They have a right now to go and pass it on to the person that's about, which is how many of you learn in Shemar as well. So what's what's that have to do with our case over here? Man, what's the logic that three people, because it's public knowledge. So it's not that we're saying there's no lush. The way we're learning, most of many of you learn, there's no lush and her involved over here, even though you're calling the guy, accusing him of being a gazlan. There's no lush and because you want to, uh, by, by accusing him of gazlan, the people there who hear it and they're passing it on, they're actually, it's constructive criticism in a way, because they're tell, they're relaying a message to the person who's who's living there, right, who's residing there right now, you better watch your star because somebody's going to go and accuse you of being a Ghanif, make sure you have a star. So it's actually constructive. So it's not really Lashon Hara. The idea of three people is that's when it's really public knowledge. And we want a macha should be out there, it should be prevalent so that the person who's living there cannot say, oh, I didn't hear about it, I don't know anything about it. Because he definitely would have heard about it. So, Ma'am of Nishnayim, the one who says that two people's enough, Let's lay the Rabbi Ravuni. He doesn't agree with the whole Rabbi Ravuni. He holds that two people will also have friends, as we learned before. Word will get out. Good enough. And I don't make a distinction between two and three. I don't believe what Rabbi Ravuni is doing. And the other one says, the man of Negimo, you need three people. Isle the Rabbi Ravuni. It does have Rabbi Ravuni. However, the, the Rajbam brings is another version. It's actually some Rishonim who learn that this is Mamish Lashon Hara. This is Lashon Hara. And therefore, the argument is, the one who says three is, you cannot say it for two because you're saying Lashon Hara. No, even though, because you're accusing the guy of being Zaganath, even though the result will be that this person will mind his shtar and it's it actually has a, a positive outcome, it's still classified Lashon Hara. And the Rajbam says he doesn't agree. That's not what Lashon Hara is. Lashon Hara is when you're hurting somebody. Here, you're actually helping them. By alerting them to the fact that there's somebody out there accusing me of God, make sure you keep your your contracts and your deeds. <clears throat> anyway, that's one explanation. That's the argument. Everyone agrees with Abba So what's going on is the a whole lot different in argument. the one who says two people but he holds he says that a macha shall lay in front of is not a good macha. So you need two witnesses. And you have to, now in other words, you have to front up to the person who's residing in your property. But make sure that you have two witnesses with you. Because if you don't have two witnesses with you, he could say, I didn't take you seriously. In fact, there's a big macha is to show him what happens if he only has one witness um, that he was moich. Is that good enough or not? Because um, some of the showing him say, the way the Rosh understood these are showing him that no, that it's uh, not good enough because he has a migui. He could have said that I, I bought the property from you. I was an eight echad that says clearly that's not the case. But the, um, but the eight echad, or he could, say, he could say that, you know, you never protested. You never, you never meichad. I was an eight echad as he was, but the, the law is that an eight echad has no bearing on carcass, on property. So therefore, it's a migui. Others say nothing to do with the migui. It's if you only come with one person to um, to um, allege that I stole the property, I can say I never took it seriously. I thought Mishata need me. I uh, I thought you were just playing around with me. You just so you wanted to see my reaction. If you were serious, you would have brought two witnesses. Talking about a property. So that but the the rush says no. Only um, uh, sorry. Others say that one is good enough, and and others say you need two people. However, uh, the other opinion says. <clears throat> That no, umandom of negimo, the one who says that if you're not going to front up, you're going to be far away. You need three people because they hold machosh aloy mefon of havi mefon. A machosh mefon is a mecha, and therefore, since it's a mecha, the only way that it will be publicized and we, we we can feel secure and confident that everybody knows, including the machzik, if you tell it to three people, just like loshen hara, there's no loshen hara anymore because three people know, the whole world knows. That the Gemara, unless you told them clearly, we had to yesterday not to repeat it to anybody else, and that's different. That's another way of explaining it. 
Um, is a third way of explaining is Kuli Alma, everyone agrees, Machor Shalai It's not an argument whether it's a Machor not. Everyone agrees that it's a Machor. But, so what's a Machlek is? Vahacha Bahachu. In fact, the Machlek is the following. Man Dharma Vifnei Beisar, the one who holds in front who says that Sahab Dusa Be'inam, that you, all you need is two people, that all you need is two witnesses that says that, yes, we we know that he was Meichel within the three years. And I, we're not guaranteed 100% that the Mahzik heard about it. Too bad. The Mahzik bought it, he should keep the star. We just have a leniency that after three years, okay, we're going to be lenient. But if the, the Ma'ara did the right thing, he did the right thing. He was Meichel. Ah, you maybe never heard about it. Too bad. We need a Gili Milsa. The guy has to hear about it. We have to know for sure the guy heard about it. If he doesn't have the star, then, then it's his own fault. A lot of machlekes in the Gemari here really revolve around the following question. And this will explain, for example, this argument, but many arguments. There's a Chakira that Achreinim have, and that is, who is the who is here the main, who is the one that we believe most, and who's the one that has to sort of prove otherwise? Do we say the Cheskes Morakama, when it comes to land, generally, we know for a fact there's no dispute that, that A owned the land previously. B comes along now and he's resigning, then he's claiming to own the land, and A says it's not true. So generally speaking, we'll follow the Morakama. We'll say it probably belongs to the first guy. It's the second guy, the onus of proof is on the second guy, that he has to somehow prove really that it's his. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is not just opposite. The guy is there right now, it's probably his. But no, this guy has a claim because once upon a time it was this. So the, oh, the burden of proof is on the original owner, prove that the guy who's living there right now is not really there. So, for example, if you hold that the main, the person that we readily believe is the original owner, then if he tells it over to two people, and even though we don't know for sure the master know about it, he did what he had to do. Because we probably think, we think it's probably his anyway. And we just said that this is the protocol. He did the protocol. He did if he followed the processes. I, maybe the guy's master heard about it, didn't hear about it. It doesn't matter. We anyway believe the Marakama over the, the Mahzik is right now. And he did everything right. And you don't have a star. Too bad. And the one who says no, that we need three people because we really need to know for sure that the guy who's there right now has to know about it. The Mahzik has to find out about it is because we hold that, generally speaking, we believe the Mahzik is probably his. And it's not fair that the Mahzi will lose the property because of the, the guy overseas or wherever he was did something and, and the Mahzi had no clue. And now we're going we're gonna to penalize him before for the property. So therefore they say, no, the only way the Machos and Machos is that we know that the Mahzi knew about it. And if he then didn't take care of his star, then that's his own fault, his own undoing. That's how we explain this Machos. But that Chakira explains many of the Machos in, in you know, the last few blocks, in the future blocks. Anyway, let's continue on. Let's go further. Gidol Bar Menyumi, Gidol the Salam Menyumi, Habalei, he had Machos Salim Chui. He had a reason to protest somebody was living on a property of his. Ashkechunu, he found his three Rabbonim, Rabhuna, Chia Barav, and Rav Chilkia Bartuvi. Now, but yes, he was sitting there and discussing learning. Umocha Kamayu. So you before in front of them, and he had three people, so he, you know, according to everybody, that's good. He made a machot. But Lashana, the following year, Halder Osil Chui went back to these three people. He said, I want to make a machot again. Amrulay said to him, Loit Sidichit. You don't need to make a machot every single year. Hachemarav. Rav said, Once you protested the first year, that's sufficient. You don't have to protest any further. So that's enough. Ikidamri, others say it wasn't all three who said that to him, but rather one of the three, Rav son So they were talking about a three year period. You don't have to be Michael three times. Once is enough. So now the Shlokish says a new din, and the most of the Shayim hold the Shlokish is saying a new din. It's not like that the, that the first three said you do it once and it's good forevermore. The Shlokish said, when we say once, it's good enough, that's only for a three year period. The end of every three year period, he has to be Michael. He has to be Michael every three years. Tehiba. <clears throat> the Hebrew are those um, 
Now, there's other Rishayim who say that, in fact, those three Chibarab argues with Ishlakish, and they hold, once you make a Machal once, it's good forever. Why? Because what can this guy come along and say? This guy can come along and say that, uh, after, I was Meich, right? But three years later, he'll say, six years later, he'll say, oh, but I then bought it, and Harai, I'm here three years already. You know, the second set of three years. We won't believe you, because if he um, made a Machal in the beginning, that you were a Ganif, we don't, then, then you you should have maintained your star, because we don't believe you actually bought it. Really, he would have sold it to you, as he accused you of being a gun. And Mashenka and Rishlaki says, no, every three years you got to do it again and again and again. Otherwise, he can say, I bought it later. Said he bought it. But he, but he, wondered. If he, but gazel, he, he, chazok, he accused him of being a gazel. So you're telling me that every three years you have to protest, because if you don't protest every three years, then the guy can say, oh, it's my field, but I am here three years. But Ramato, if he if he if he if he's complained in in, in year one, what's yeah. he doing? Letting him stay on the property for year two and year three or or, or beyond? I don't. I'm, I'm... That's a general question. The general answer is because the guy is far away and he thinks it's far better for my property, um, it's far better for my property to have somebody illegal there. But at least he's working with the property and not letting it grow weeds and everything else. Then if nobody's there and leaves a fellow, when I come back in a few years' time from my overseas, whatever, sojourn, I'll come back. It'll be a disaster because i got to put so much work. That's the only possible question. But I want to make sure that he doesn't go around claiming that it's, he owns it. So even though he's there illegally, he's a goslin, or he's waiting to find a, a good legal team so that he can go to a bezin and, and uh, prove that it was really his property. But until that happens, you know, he can't chase the guy off. He's just making a protest. Or it's Machosh Leib of He's not around. He's not around to do anything about it. So said him out further. So Rabbi Yechon understood that, that, he, that the guy is definitely got it. So the Gazli is a Chazaka. So uh, what do you mean? After the first three years, if he's in another three years, but he's a guy, he's been established to be a Ghana. Gazli, nobody proved that this person residing is a Gazli. So it's an allegation. And the kid Gazli. Yes, the Chazaka. He's not he the, the, the original owner is saying the guy is a Gazan, but the guy is saying, I, I bought it, I, I own it. So he's not, we don't know for a fact he's a Gazan. We didn't even know who to believe. It's a Safi Gazan. So if he's there for three years, he has some credibility. Like you're asking, why is he still there after three years? That you have to um be moicha every three years, which the fact that Rabbi said that sounds like there's a machikis and he's making a ruling. Tony Baka, like those who showed Tony Bakapora Bakapora said, Irir, Chazar the Irir, Chazar the Irir. That um, if let's say the original owner went and he said, This guy is a Ganaf, he has no right to be my property. A year later, he comes along and says, This guy has no right to be my property. He's only there because he bought the rights for the fruits. Sorry, he has a right to be there, but he only bought the rights for the yield, for the crop. He has no rights to the land itself. And then Chazavir, and then he went back to the first time that he's a Ganev, or he went another one. I gave it to him as a mashkin for a loan. If he maintains the same claim every time, you're a Ganev, you're a Ganev, you're a Ganev, then the guy has no Chazaka. But if he changes his claim, there's a Chazaka. So Big Machaik is a shiny man. In our Gemara's version, it says it three times Eder, Chazavi Eder, and Chazavi Eder. So in our so many of the showing left shot here is that in, in order to say that the original owner is definitely a liar, he had to change the story three times. So then he's a Hurzik Kafr, he's established to be a liar. So there's an eater, one claim, then Khazavira, a second claim, and then Khazavira, a third claim. And each time is different. So he's a Muhzik Kafr. But if he only did it twice, first he came along and said one thing, and then he came along and said another thing, according to these are showing him, he's not a Kafr. He can say, I am I, I realized I made a mistake, and this is really what the problem is. And others say, no, that even the moment he changes the story, the guy is machzi can come along and say, hey, I see you're playing games here. One day you make up this story, and then you can try another story. I never took it seriously, and therefore I'm not watching the star. And therefore even two times he changed the story, he no longer is a machzi. Others say a third opinion is only if the second time it contradicts the first time. But if it doesn't contradict it, it just adds on to it, then it's not considered um, a change of story, and it's good enough. And it, it's still a macho. And the guy should have watched his God as his star. Second, first, that 
Okay, so there's a number of dinim he heard from Nachman, and he says each din separately. Din number one. Omar Rava, Omar Rav Nachman. Macho, din number one. When it comes to macho, bifnesh naim. You do it in front of two people. Now, what about writing a contract? To write it down, to record, so we have testimony. The ain tzadik loymer ksuvu. He doesn't even have to tell them to these two witnesses record what just happened there. They on their own. Usually, when you have a star, you have to get permission from the person. Do you want me not to give instructions? Write me a star over here. They can just write the star down. That what that the that the, to record. We heard the, uh, the the original owner protest about this person squatting in his land, claiming he's a squatter. And why? Because it benefits him. Here is a fascinating machlek is and it's very a very important question generally. What is a star? How does a star work? Any star? Because we have a problem with all stars, and that is that the Torah says mepihem v'loy mepiksavim. Apishnaim edin yakum dover. So we learn out mepihem v'loy mepiksavim. That edin you have to hear it from them, not what they write. So how can you have a star? Every star is a written piece of paper. And the it's two witnesses sign it. Sorry? Bitcoin made him. The two Adam sign it. So what? Yeah. It's been Bitcoin made him. him. Sorry? We treat it as if it, as if they were Adam. Yeah. On what basis? The Torah clearly says, and Rashi says that if the witnesses write down their testimony on a piece of paper and they give it into court, it's useless. Because with P. Ham and So how does any star work? How does a star work? So, so the big machlek is the Rambam, the Ramban, the Ramban, the Rambam holds that all star is a midrabon. is useless. It's a piece of paper. And the Ramban disagrees. And, he, and one of his questions the Rambam is, how do you have a divorce? A get. A get to the piece of paper with the witnesses on it. But the Rishenim over here say as follows. You know what makes a star a star versus uh, Adim just writing a document themselves to remember what their testimony is? Because both parties involved, both parties involved agree or instruct the agent to sign. A lender and a borrower. The lender and the borrower say to the agent, write to start. A vendor and a purchaser. They both say to the agent, write to start. Because you have everybody who's in the story involved, that's no longer a testimony of the agent. A BP, I think something is the agent saw something and they write down on a piece of paper what happened, what they saw, they sent the best. That's a piece of paper, says Rashi. That's useless. But if the if the people who the story is about are involved and they instruct the agent, that becomes a star. And that is effective. That's how we learn according to Rashi. Rabbein Tam disagrees. In fact, a very important argument. Rabbein Tam says, does not mean that at all. In fact, there's nothing wrong. If agent write on a piece of paper, they could definitely, it's, 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 it's recognized in the best. If they don't come in, they talk, and they just write on a piece of paper, a testimony, it's 100% validated. So therefore, star is no problem. The, the, the Rabbein Tam says that means that if you cannot speak, if you're an ilum, if you're mute, then since you cannot speak, nor can you write. But if you're capable of speaking, instead you just put it in writing, there's no problem whatsoever. <clears throat> so therefore, so that's all right. So that, so there's no problem with any star. And why are you bringing this up here? Because the the person who made the macha instructed the Adam to write the star, but the person who's the machzik did not. So the way we learn according to Rashi, the only reason why a star is worth anything is because both parties instructed the Adam. In this case, they didn't. In this case, only the, the, the original owners instructed the Adam. Okay, I didn't instruct them, but we're writing for them so that, you know, that you protest it. But the guy who's squatting in the land or is living there right now never gave that, never instructed the Adam to do that. So what kind of star is that? What's the, what's the worth? So the Rishonim explained, according to Rashi, you're going to have to say that it's a special takanas chachamim. What do you mean special takanas chachamim? Because, again, it only really makes sense if we learn, like we said before, that really we believe the original owner. We believe it's probably his. And therefore, the as, as long as he made a chachas somewhere, it's good enough. Following that line of thinking, the same thing here. Even though technically this is not really a shtar, because only one side instructs, or you know, you're doing it, the animal doing it for one side, but because we, we believe it probably belongs to him anyway, this would be good enough. So that's how, again, I'm just trying to show you how this Hakira explains so many different things in the Gemara. Okay, that's din number one. Din number two, Maidah. We had a Gemara in the second page. What's a Maidah? A Maidah is 
where um, I, for whatever reason, I have to sign a contract. I have to sign a contract, but I don't really want to sell. I'm a reluctant and recalcitrant. Uh, we'll see certainly what kind of case we're talking about. So therefore, before that, I moist my door. I, I notify two witnesses and I tell them, I want you to know I'm about to enter a contract, but I'm telling you up front, and my heart is not into it. In fact, I refuse to sell, but I have no choice. I have no braver. So I want you to know that the, whatever I'm signing now is just uh, a front or just a facade. It's not real. In fact, when you go to the interior, when you go to the interior, you have to sign that you are canceling all your maidos if you notify anybody prior, you know, so and so and so. I want you to know I'm canceling all my maidos because my dos can undo whatever you sign afterwards. Is it my do when you're forced to, to sign something? We'll soon you're forced see what to case, say it. We'll soon see when, when, when which it's, it's very limiting the case of my dog. We'll soon see. Okay. My do night. So if you want to give an issue of this my do, you have to notify two witnesses on the one hand. But the ain sadik loimikasaiba, but you don't have to tell them uh, to write it down because it's, it's to your benefit to write it down. So therefore they could write it down. What exactly is the case of my do? The Gemara will, will tell us in a minute. Okay. Um, if you're minded that you owe somebody money, yeah, and, and you you have to say it in front of two witnesses, but in this case here, you need to instruct the witnesses to write it down. They can't just write down that Reuben owes Shimon $100. And why is that? Because there's a difference between a Milva Ape and a Milva Bishtar. If it's if you lend me money, a hundred dollars, just you know, you lend me money, even, even though it's in front of two witnesses, I'm out with me having more the second paragraph as well. I can pay it back. I don't need to have witnesses when I pay it back. I can just pay it back. But if if you lent me money with a star, then I need witnesses that I paid you back. So I'm happy that if I lent you, if I borrowed money from you, I want it to remain a mill the whatever I can't find 80, I want to pay you back. I'm traveling and I'm going to pay back. It's a nuisance. I want it to remain in the status of uh, as um, a Milva Alpe. So the Adim have no right to record it unless they were instructed to do so. Next case, Kenyan. A Kenyan, we're talking about a Kenyan Sudur, a Kenyan of a handkerchief, which is Khalip, an exchange of the handkerchief. I have your cow. Is Bifnesh Naim in front of two people. And the Ain of Tzadok so you don't have to tell them to write. Now, this is a big Machlekes here. Kenyan bifnesh naim. So the general shot, what? When you make a Kenyan, you need two witnesses. I'm buying something for you. I need two witnesses. So most of Shane hold, you definitely don't need two witnesses when you buy something or in, or Khalid or anything. It's just that if you happen to have two witnesses who witness it, if they want to write it, they can. The Ainu Tzorachleim, you don't have to tell them they can write it down. And why? Because Khalipin is different than all other Kenyanim. All other Kenyanim, you got to get the money out. And the or Meshikh, you got to schlep it. it. It takes time. There's an effort involved. Khalipin, one, two, three. I give you a handkerchief and, and you get back, and it's over. The whole Kenyan is over. Because that means I'm not even giving myself time to rethink, to reconsider whether I want to continue with this Kenyan or not. It happens in a flash. So, therefore, the Adim can write it down and record it because you're not going to change your mind. All other Kenyanim, by the time you finish whatever the Kenyan is, maybe you'll change your mind. So, the Adim have no right to write it down you know, at all before you bought it. That's, That's why we don't have true. aiding by Mechiras Chometz. Sorry? Mechiras Chometz, we do Khalifa. No, we don't no aid him. There's no, there's no aid him. Exactly. But there's one opinion, the Ravid. He holds that um, that you do need two witnesses by a Kenyan Khalifa. And all the Roshayim ask, the Gemara Samachede in Pedushin said, Le'ibn Sada Ella L'Shakrib. Um... Uh, when you don't really need witnesses for a Kenyan, you need witnesses in case somebody disputes it and lies and says it never happens. I have two witnesses to prove them otherwise. It's only a riot, it's only support, but they're not the ones who establish the Kenyan. Why would the Ravid say you need two witnesses for a Kenyan? So, the, so some of the Rishon, the Rajbah actually explains at length, and he says very interesting that there's two kinds of Chalipi. There's a Chalipi we have in Rus, where we learned Chalipin out from. Shalavich and Allah took a shoe off. And the exchange of the shoe, he got all the you know the, the rights for Rus and everything else. Then we have a Kenyan Sudr, a handkerchief. And what is the difference? We have remember you had the moment of Durham, how a handkerchief works. I give you the handkerchief, but you give it right back to me. So says says the Rajma, the original Kenyan Khalipa was you gave them the shoe, and in exchange of the shoe, 
I was kind of whatever it is, but you kept the shoe. There's there no different that Kenyan than any other Kenyan. So you don't need aid him for that kind of a Kenyan. The Kenyan was a shoe itself. He says, but well, today, Chalipin, you give a handkerchief, but you take it right back. So in that case, what kind of Kenyan is that? There's no exchange, exchange of what? I gave you a handkerchief, but you give it right back to me. So therefore, the, the Ravid says, you need Adim. It's the Kenyan together with the Adim, this kind of Kenyan. Together with witnesses that make it a Kenyan, establish a Kenyan. Otherwise, there's no Kenyan. That's what how he explains that opinion. And that's how they learn Gemara. Kenyan, if finish nine, you need two people. Okay. The Kiyim Shtaris Bishlesh. And Kiyim Shtaris, you need three people. In other words, if you, if you have a star and you want to go to Bezim, you need a Gishtemke, you need a the, the Bezim to verify that the star is, that the, the, the signatures are authentic, you need three people. You need three people. So Amar Rav says, I don't understand. Uh, if I'm bothered with Enya Nachman said, Hakash, this is what I'm bothered with. Hi, Kenyan Hechidami, what's this Kenyan talking about? What is this Kenyan? If the Kenyan we treat um, um, like a Maise Bezin, <clears throat> if a Kenyan is like a, an act of Bezin, right? Is that what? It's, what do you mean, act of Bezin? Because in the Kenyan, you're taking money from one person and you're bringing it to another person. Bezin has the right, Hefke Bezin, Hefke. If we treat a Kenyan like a Maise Bezin, then every Kenyan, two witnesses, you need a Bezin. The Bezin are the ones who have the power to take money from one person to another. And he like a Maise Bezin. And if you tell me that it's not like a Maise Bezin, Chalip is not like a Maise Bezin, that's what a Kenyan is. You know, we two people agree on a sale. Then a Maya is like super. But so why doesn't, why do you say you don't have to instruct the agent to write it down? Maybe you should write it down. But, so, you know, if it's only with no Maise Bezin, then you can't just write a star without, you know, getting uh, input from the people that is involved. So how come you don't have to import him, inform them or instruct him? <clears throat> the Gemara especially the one who's who sold it, in a way he's losing something, he has to instruct the agent to write it. Because remember, you need both parties, the vendor and the buyer. So, boss of the buyer, the pastor, after he asked the question, he resolved it. It's not a Maise Bezin at all. King is not a Maise Bezin. So why is it, by when it comes to Chalipin, you don't have to instruct the witnesses, they can go straight ahead and write this star that this was sold, you know, by swapping. The Einut Tzadok Lein Meksuvah, why not? Mishum the Stam Kinyin Leksiva Oymet. Because since this Kinyin happened so quickly in a flash, that means they already made up their mind that they're happy with this deal. There's no reservations whatsoever. So the Einut go rest assured, they can go ahead and write, uh, and, and write the star down. <clears throat> Now, the Gemara continues here talking about this Moidor that we mentioned before. So I guess you learned it tomorrow already, so we'll leave it for that. But then the Gemara will explain Moidor and limits the case of Moidor, when it works and when it doesn't work. Okay, have a good Vachar, everybody.